Hello guys, this is CTK Gamer. Today I'm going to show you guys how to play Sid Meier's Civilization A New Dawn. This is what the board looks like once it's been set up. It's been set up. This is called the focus bar. There's slots 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And on them there's the pictures for grasslands, hills, forests, desert, and mountain. There are five different types of focus cards. There's the culture, military, science, economy, and industry. These are your plastic pieces. You'll have seven additional cities and two additional caravans. You start with one caravan on your economy card and your main capital city starts on the board. These are your control tokens. On one side they're sort of generic. And on the other side is the reinforced side. These have a better defense. They increase defense of adjacent territories and also you can tell they're reinforced because they have an extra circle around them. This is the tech dial. You increase your tech dial by using your science card and once it reaches a Roman numeral then you can upgrade that level card and replace it with the same type in your focus room. Focus. This is your leader sheet. It has a picture of the leader, the name of your country, and here is your ability. At the bottom it tells you what cards start out in what focus or slot for the beginning of the game. Of the game. These are your diplomacy cards. Once a, an, another player's caravan reaches your, one of your cities, they get to choose one of these to take. You can only have one of each person's diplomacy card at a time. This is the event dial. Each round it will move over one place, and each time it moves it will affect something on the something on the These are the wonders you can buy. There are four types of wonders. Military, which are red, science, which are blue, economy, which are yellow, and culture, which are purple. It says at the bottom how much it costs and what resource you can spend to get it. Once you've gotten that, then you get the ability, which is infinite to use, and then you also get the token and you place the token under one of your cities. These are the diplomacy cards belonging to the city-states. Normally there will be two to four city-states on your board. Once you reach a caravan to one city-state, you get another diplomacy card. The diplomacy card is a good ability. These are the victory conditions. They are normally going to be three cards, two conditions on each card. In order to win, you have to have one condition met on each card. You can choose whether it's on the top or bottom for each. If one player gets one uh, victory condition met, that does not keep any other player from getting it. getting it. During your turn, you choose one of your focus cards and resolve its effect. Once you've done whatever it says, you reset the cards. To reset the card, let's say we used masonry here. During your turn, at the beginning, you slide out the card you use. Once you're done, to reset it, you pull it out. Every card to the left of it slides up one, and then you put it back, the card you just used, you put in the first slot. The focus row has five slots. Each one has a number, which represents what slot it is, and it also has the terrain that goes with that. Each card's effect gets better and better as it moves up. So some cards you might want to wait to use, and use other cards instead, so that you can wait for that card to cycle up to a higher number. Higher number. Let's go into a bit more detail about each card. So the first type is military. Military, the first thing it allows you to do is reinforce control tokens. So remember there are the two sides to the control tokens, unreinforced and reinforced. Here, as you can see, we have three unreinforced control tokens. So Different military cards will say different things, but in this case, we reinforce the number of control tokens equal to this slot's number. We are in slot 1, so we can reinforce one control token. It does not matter what terrain that tro control token is, on. token is on. We can choose one, so we will reinforce this one. The next thing that military cards can do are attack. The number, or the slot that it's in, indicates what your military level is. It will also tell you on the card how far away you can attack from a friendly space. A friendly space is a city control token, but not a caravan. 
In our case, it says our range of attack is 2. As you can see, there's nothing to attack within two spaces. However, the things that you can attack are enemy cities, enemy control tokens, barbarians, and city-states. The attacker gets several things to determine his military level, and how one wins a battle is whoever has the highest military level wins, ties going to the defender. The first way, the first uh, military number comes from the military card's slot. So in this case, we're in slot 1, so there's 1 for us. The next thing will come from any abilities you might have. The next thing is on the card sometimes, depending on what level you have, it will add a bonus to your military. The last thing is dice roll. No matter if you're attacking or defending, you'll always get dice as your third step to get, be able to get more military bonuses. Something worth mentioning that goes for all of these cards, at the bottom it will have an ability. If you have these trade tokens on your cards, you can have a maximum of three on them. You'll learn later how you get them on the cards. In this case, it's a military card, and it says we can spend, for every one of these we spend, we get plus one combat value. So that's just another way to get combat value. Now let's go ahead and see how we calculate the defender's bonus. The defender bonus gets one base if it is a control token that's defending. It gets two if it is a reinforced that's defending. The city is just the terrain level, which in this case is grasslands, which is one, doubled. It's impossible to destroy a capital city. Then, for every adjacent reinforced control token, you get plus one bonus. bonus. And then, of course, you get your dice roll. dice roll. If it's a city state that's defending, it gets eight plus a dice roll. If it is a barbarian that's defending, it gets its terrain level plus a dice roll. If it's a control token that loses, the control token is put away and the attacker's control token is then placed there. If it is a city that's destroyed, unless it's a capital city, then you simply replace that city with one of your own. If you don't have any, then you put a reinforced control token there. If it's a capital city, you get to take three different con tra control ah, trade tokens off of their cards and put them on cards of your choice. If it's a city-state that lost, the attacker will place a city on that, they'll take the token, and see this is, has the military symbol, so we'll put this on the military card. Now this acts as an infinite trade token that you can spend once per turn, it never leaves this card, unless that city-state is liberated. Liberate. When someone attacks this city that's on top of what used to be city-state, if they win, they have two options. The first option is to capture it and put one of their cities on it. The second option is to liberate it, which means they just take that and put it right back where it was. If they do, they immediately get a diplomacy card from that city-state. If it's a barbarian that's defending and loses, the barbarian gets taken off the board, and the player gets one control token, I'm sorry, not control token, trade token, to place on a card of their choice. Remember, you can only have a maximum of three trade tokens on each card, but city-states do not count towards that number. On to our next card, the culture card. The culture card allows you to place control token. On the card, it will tell you how many you can place, and you can place them on trains of that card slot or lower. So in this case, it says we can place two, and we can place it in hills or grassland. grassland. As you see, we have our two control tokens, and hills or grasslands, so there, there, or there. Place them on the unreinforced side. We'll place ours there and there. There. If a control token is placed on top of a resource, that is how you collect the resource. You take this, and you put it wherever you feel like keeping the resources. This is the only way to get resources off the board. Caravans cannot do that by moving into resources. You'll notice on the card, it says place two control tokens on spaces matching this lot's terrain or lower that are adjacent to friendly spaces. As I've told you before, a friendly space is either a control token or a city. So we can't place this one 
all the way over here because it's not adjacent to a friendly space. We could place it, place it here, however, or here. You cannot place control tokens in water. water. If a control token is placed on top of a natural wonder like this, you keep this side up and put it wherever you're keeping your resources. Natural wonders work sort of like city-states that are on top of a card. They are that type of resource, which in this case is oil, infinite, but only can be used once per turn. turn. You cannot place control tokens on top of barbarian tokens, city-state tokens, or cities. Next up, we have the astrology card. This is the science card, actually. So it says, advance your tech dial a number of spaces equal to slot's number. So once you use this card, this is in slot 3, so with your tech dial, you advance it up 3. In this case, we've got to Roman numeral 2. Every time you get to Roman numeral, you immediately get a card of that type and choose it. You don't have to choose it randomly. And you replace it with the same type card of... Well, you know what I mean. So basically, right now we're at our Roman numeral 2, so we look through our Roman numeral 2s. Once we find one we like, like maybe this one, the culture one, then no matter where the culture card is, in this case it's right here, we replace it. We take this and put it into the discard pile, wherever that might be. That's it for basically what the science card can do. Then you would reset your cards when you're done using it, just like you would with any other card. One thing to note about this tech dial, once it reaches 24, once you've reached 24 and you've completely gotten the level 4 tech, it will reset that back to 14. You do not get a level 3 tech in this case, it's as if you're working from, 13, from 14, so basically you just keep working on this half until you've gotten all level 4 techs. For the second to last card, we have the economy card, the level 1 version of which is foreign trade. It will show a number of caravans on the bottom. That's how many you can have on the board at a time. The card allows you to move caravans. It will tell you how many spaces you can move it, and you can move them onto terrains of this slot's level or lower. So in this case, desert, forest, mountains, and grasslands. So basically anything except for water or mountain. Caravans can leave from one of the two things, a capital city or a mature city. To make a city mature, its outskirts, if that's what you want to call it, have to be completely surrounded. They have to be surrounded by one of three things. First of all, they have to be surround, have surrounded by either control tokens. Second thing is water. And the third thing is edge of the board. So as you can see, this space is control token, so is that. Water, water edge of the board, so as long as we place a control token right here, like so, now this is a mature city, so a caravan could leave from it. Once a caravan reaches its destination, you immediately get a diplomacy card of that type. Of that. In this case, we reached Carthage, so we take one of Carthage's cards and we put it with our own. With our own. These are called diplomacy cards. They're pretty good abilities you can use normally once per turn. If the caravan reaches another player's city instead of a city-state, then you get to choose one of their diplomacy cards. They start out with four diplomacy cards, and they're different, so you can look through and choose which one. If you already have one of theirs, you can either keep the one you have, or you can switch it out for another one, but you can only have one of theirs at a time. At a time. Next, you get your trade tokens. So you get two trade tokens. In this case, this is a military city-state, so we get two trade tokens and we put them on our military card, just like that. If it moves into another player, another player, then you get your two trade tokens that you can place on any card that you want. The last thing to do is to take your caravan piece and put it right back on your economy card. Then you reset your card because you are done. Time for our very last card the industry card. You can do the first thing you can do is build a wonder. So to build a wonder you have to have a certain amount of production. The production required is listed on the bottom left of each wonder card. In this case it says eight. The other thing that it shows is what resources are eligible to be spent towards this wonder. In this case oil and granite. Granite. 
So let's say that the one that we want, the wonder we want, costs uh, 8. So pretend we have these here. So the first production you get is from the slot. So in this case, we're in slot 5. The next thing you get is from any of these you spend. So in this case, let's go 6, 7, we spend 2. Now, the last thing is from any resources you have. It shows there are two eligible resources for each wonder, and they're listed on the bottom right of each card like I showed you. In our case, it was oil and granite. And as you see right here, we have an oil. And this we can use once per turn infinitely. So if we spend this, for each type of resource you spend, you get two production. So we have seven, and if we spend this, we'll have nine. We only needed eight, so one just gets wasted. Now, if we were spending a resource like this that was from the board, then we have to put it back into the reserve, but we're not in this case. So we have enough, so now we can go ahead and get our wonder. So you take the wonder's card and the matching token, then go ahead, turn over the next card, and get the matching token on top of the pile. Next, you probably would like to read your card's ability, and then go ahead and grab your token. You can place your token underneath any of your cities that does not already have one. It cannot go in the outskirts, it has to go right underneath that city. You can only have one underneath each city. If a city is captured, then you get the person, when they build their city there, gets that wonder. If it's a, a capital city that's cap defeated, then that wonder, they have the choice to move on to one of their cities. If they don't have enough space for it, then it just stays right here. here. The wonder's effect is affects everything. It doesn't just affect the city that it's under. So it doesn't matter where you place the city for its effect, it just matters for its defense. The other thing that an industry card can do is build a city. As you see it says, or build a city on a legal space of this slot's train or lower, so right now we're in slot 5 so we can do it in any train, within two spaces of a friendly space. And you already know what a friendly space is. Space is. So we can put it on any train 5 or lower, so anything but water. Okay, You can never place a city on water no matter what. So the restrictions are you can't place it on top of a, a barbarian token. You can't place it on actually pretty much any token except for one of your uh, control tokens. So we can't place it on this, can't place it on this, can't place it on a city-state, barbarian token, but we could place it right here, like that, getting rid of that control token. And we could do that if we wanted to. That is it for the focus row cards. The last main thing is the event style. So before each, what the first person goes on each round, this gets moved one place. On this, nothing happens. On this, the barbarians move. The barbarians will always move only one space, nor well, normally, and to determine which direction they move, you roll a dice. In this case, we got a two. a two. When you guys set up the board, you will place this up against the edge of the board. Now as you see, the two is pointing this way, so all barbarians will move one space in that direction. So C will move right there. Now, let's say, for example, that instead he was supposed to go that way for some reason. It's the edge of the board, so instead he moves in the opposite direction. If he moves on top of a resource, nothing happens. Same with a natural wonder. If it goes on top of a city-state, then you cannot trade with that city-state during the turn that it's on it. It's on it. Let's say that it comes up to water. It just keeps going in the direction it has to until it reaches land. Now, it gets a bit tricky if there is no land on the other side of the water, so if he has to move here, he reaches the edge of the board, he goes the opposite direction, so in that case, he would basically bounce right back to where he was. was. If our barbarian moves into a capital city, then whoever capital city it is gets to choose three of their control of trade tokens to get rid of. If it moves into non-capital city, that city is destroyed. If it moves on to reinforced control token, you unreinforce it. And then if it moves on to an unreinforced control token, it destroys that control token. Okay. Once this goes to here, each player gets one trade token to place on a card of their choice for each mature city they have. I've already told you what a mature city is. 
Again, here it's just movement. For the last one, Barbarian Respawn. When the event tile shows the Barbarian Respawn, you look for any Barbarians that are dead. In this case, let's say that C is dead. Then you look for their spawn point. In this case, it says C right there. As long as this has nothing on it, it goes right there now. Okay? But let's say that there is either a city or a control token, reinforced or unreinforced there. He cannot spawn there, he'll just have to wait. But if there's a caravan there, then he just destroys the caravan. And something I should have mentioned about barbarian movement, if they move into a caravan space, the caravan is destroyed. Just Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope I explained everything in a way that made sense. Feel free to subscribe, look around my channel, and try to find something new that you might like. And go ahead and have a good rest of your day.